Hello and welcome to Tank and AFV News. My name is Tom. Uh, it's been a, well, quite a while since I made a video, sort of. Uh, took a little break there because just had some things going on in my life, but now I have um, quite a bit more time to work on tank related stuff. So I'm going to try to do uh, daily, maybe, regular videos. Um, expect to see book reviews. Uh, going to pick up the Tanks of World War II series again. And sometimes just a video like today where I just want to talk about something that I saw on YouTube and wanted to respond to. Specifically, I was watching the uh, Tank Museum at Bovington. They have their Tank Chats series starring uh, historian David Fletcher. Some episodes also star David Wiley, who's the, the curator. Um, and it's a really great series because obviously they have a great collection of vehicles. So, you know, those are great props when you're talking about a tank to be able to have one next to you, unlike me, who's just got a lot of uh, little... Whoop. Just that way, 172 scale models and a bunch of books. So, the one I was watching today was David Fletcher talking about the M46 Patton tank. And in the video, he makes an interesting statement regarding torsion bar suspension on that vehicle. So, I'm going to play the clip right here because he's essentially asking a question. And I figured, what the heck, I'll try to answer it. So, here's the clip. The suspension is torsion bar, and that's another... Thing that really needs explaining is the origins of torsion bar. We know they came in with the M24 and the M26 during the war. Before that, the Americans had used the vertical and horizontal volute spring suspension. But why they suddenly went to torsion bar, where the torsion bar idea came from, we don't know. And that would be another thing that we'd, we'd need to know. Now, obviously, David Fletcher is a very, very well-informed uh, person when it comes to knowledge on tanks. He's been researching this stuff for years. He has access to the museum and the archives and all that good stuff. So I thought the question was, uh, my, my first thought was it's sort of an odd question because everybody during World War II was moving toward torsion bar suspension. Everybody except the British. So maybe he's spent so much time with, with British tanks that, you know, to them it makes that like, why would everybody else go to torsion bars? The British went from the, you know, Christie suspension on their cruiser tanks, um, and then the, I don't even know how to describe the suspension systems on their infantry tanks, and then after the war they went to a horseman system, which is essentially a bogey system, kind of old-fashioned in some ways, but uh, worked quite well for the British. Uh, obviously the Centurion was a very successful tank. So the question of why did the United States go to torsion bars, and when did they make that decision? Well, obviously, the vehicles that went into service at the beginning of World War II were not torsion bar. They were all vertical volute suspension systems. And most of those had been designed in the 30s by a fellow named Harry Knox. At least he's the one with his name on the patents. And that's what was available. That you know, The U.S. had spent very little money on armored vehicle production in the 30s, certainly, and not very much on development, like just a handful of prototypes. And so these... Um, volute spring bogey systems is what they had, so that's sort of what they went with. Once the war's going and new designs are starting to be created, uh, they went with torsion bar, because a lot of people have been looking at torsion bars in the 30s. Um, the first people to introduce a tank with torsion bars is the, is the Swedes with the L60, then the Germans with the Panzer III, and the Soviets on the KV, heavy tank. So. Certainly torsion bars would have been something that the U.S. knew about because we were paying attention to what other countries were doing. Um, so it's not surprising that the U.S., like almost everybody else except the British, went to torsion bars. Now, is that a very concrete answer to Mr. Fletcher's question? Not really. Um, it, but So I started digging a little bit, and I like to f look in patents and see what's out there, and I found one for from 1934 for a U.S. torsion bar suspension system for a tank. So, obviously this was on the radar. Somebody had patented it in 1934. Now you could say, well, was this person just some inventor off working, or was he somebody that was known to the U.S. military? Well, the patent holder is Gladion Barnes, who was the, <laughs> was the general in charge of ordnance uh, during World War II. So, obviously he's the guy. I mean, so this, yes, this was known to the U.S. Um, so as early as 1934, the idea of torsion bar suspension for tanks was advanced enough that the head of ordnance had his own patent out on the concept. 
of course, it took until World War II where the funding was available to develop it into a useful system. So hopefully that will that's the answer to the question, I hope. If anybody has any, any other documentary evidence of, of uh, U.S. torsion bar development uh, before 1934, that would be awesome. But, you know, I, I don't have access to the archives myself. I just like to goof around looking at Google patents and seeing what I can find. So and I'll put a link in the description to that patent. So people can look it if they want. Um, I've wasted hours um, at Google Patents just like looking for patents then following the links at the bottom of the other patents that reference that patent. And it's, 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 it's a rabbit hole you can lose yourself down. So anyhow, that is my video for today. Uh, I hope, uh, sort of an obscure oddball topic, but hopefully somebody found it of interest. Uh, some next couple days we'll probably be hitting you with some book reviews. Um, so we've got some interesting stuff coming up and expect to see more videos on a regular basis from here on out. So thank you much. Take care.